Hello, everyone. Welcome to Meeting the Needs of Mayan Students in the School District of Palm Beach County. Today, we will focus on culture, historical overview, languages, newcomers, and support. My name is Sonia Cabrera Lopez. I am a member of the Maya Mom community of the Western Highlands of Guatemala. I work for the Palm Beach County School District in the Department of Multicultural Education in the capacity of a Maya Mom language interpreter, community liaison, and professional development presenter for teachers, administrators, and staff regarding the Mayan diaspora in Palm Beach County, specifically in the areas of culture and languages. We are not Hispanics. Why then be part of the Hispanic Studies Institute? You might even be wondering if you are in the correct virtual session. No worries, you are in the right session. Historically and geographically speaking, Guatemala does belong to the Hispanic countries, as it is indicated on the map of Hispanic countries. However, as a descendant of the Mayas, I do not consider myself Hispanic. As you may or may not know, my ancestors, the Mayas, belong to the Native Americans or indigenous people that encompasses Alaska to South America, natives to the continent of the Americas before the invasions from European countries. The English in North America, the Spaniards in Central and South America, and other European countries such as Portugal in Brazil. As we continue with this presentation, it is our goal to share with all of you the richness and contributions of our ancestors, the Mayas of Guatemala, the past, the present, and the future of our community in Palm Beach County. We will also provide resources and tips on best practices to assist Mayan students in your classroom. Have you asked yourself, where are the Mayas located? How many Maya languages exist in Guatemala today? How many Mayan languages are spoken by Mayan children in the school district of Palm Beach County? How many Mayan students do I have in my classroom? Are there any other languages spoken in Guatemala that are not of Mayan origin? The ancient Maya culture covered what is known today, the states of Yucatan, Campeche, Tabasco, Quintana Roo, and Chiapas, Mexico. It also extends to the greater part of Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Belize. In Guatemala, the splendor of the Maya empire centered in the tropical lowlands. The Maya excelled in agriculture, pottery, hieroglyphic writing, calendar making, mathematics, and weaving, just to mention a few accomplishments. The city of Tikal is a testament to the impressive architectural accomplishments and construction without modern tools used today. One of the great accomplishments of my ancestors was the use of the mathematical concept of zero. They used a number system with the base number 20 by using a system of bars and dots. A dot to represent one, a bar to represent the number five, and zero is represented with a symbol that looks like a shell. My ancestors also used rubber to make different products, such as shoes, and most commonly known today, the ball. My ancestors produced rubber products about 3,000 years before Goodyear received his patent in 1843. The invention of the ball game influenced modern day sports. Everybody's favorite confectionery and beverage of chocolate was developed very early on in Mayan culture. For my ancestors, cacao drink or chocolate was used for ceremonial purposes. The cacao bean was used for monetary purposes and medicinal purposes and for cooking. Today, chocolate is consumed everywhere in the world. The Maya hieroglyphic writing is complex. It is composed of unique symbols of humans, animals, objects, and abstract designs. Linguists 
from around the world have flocked to the ancient Maya cities to decipher and translate the hieroglyphic writing system. My ancestors were expert agriculturists. The main crop staples included corn, beans, and squash, which were often grown together. The corn provided mutual support for each crop. The corn stalk offers the beans support and the beans pulls nitrogen from the air and brings it to the soil. As the beans grow, they wind their way up the corn stalks into the sunlight. The large leaves and thick vines of the squash protect the plants by providing shade to the soil, keeping it cool and moist and preventing weeds. The squash also prevents erosion during the rainy season. Muchas gracias, Shuli. Gracias por participar. Thank you for participating. My name is Dominga Shunkash, and I am a native of the Highlands of Guatemala and a member of the Acateco and Canjobal community. I have been working with the Multicultural Education Department of Palmish County since 1996. I received my Bachelor of Science in Education from the university. Prior to my current position, I was an ESO teacher for four years at Highland Elementary. Currently, I provide language and social services support to parents, school staff, and administrators. In addition, I develop and present to teachers, administrators, and community language facilitators in the area of culture, language, and education. It is important to understand, before the European invasion of the Americas, the Mayas, the Aztec, the Incas, and Native American tribes in the United States and Canada already live in this continent. In the case of Guatemala, Pedro de Alvarado invaded the Mayan territories in 1524. Since that time, my people have suffered different invasions, colonization, dictatorships, and genocides. During this time period, and most recently, we have had very little or no voice in decision making at all levels. My ancestors have been marginalized and excluded from political and economical decisions. The silent holocaust and genocide against my ancestors began with the invasion of Spain led by Pedro de Alvarado in 1524. After that day, everything changed. From 1874 to 1944, Guatemala was ruled by a succession of military dictators. In 1931, Jorge Ovico became Guatemala's president and during his ruling, the UFC stands for United Fruit Company had a monopoly on the country's coffee and banana trade. It also owned Guatemala's duck, railroads, and communications. So we could exempt them from taxes and gave them 200,000 hectares of land taken from my people. From 1944 to 1954, political democracy, agrarian, and labor reforms were achieved. Schools, hospitals, and minimum wage were established and health and safety standards were set up. Unfortunately, this accomplishment did not last long. In the mid-1954, the president was overthrown with the support of the United States. This was led by Castillo Armas. The voting rights of for illiterate Guatemalans were removed and schools were shut down in the rural areas where the majority of my people live. The beginning of the civil war started in 1960 because of the difference that existed in the education economic and political system in Guatemala for the indigenous people. In 1970, indigenous began to participate in protests against the authoritarian government and demanding equal rights, respect for their culture and languages, justice and freedom for all. As a result, the government called my people communist supporters. The United Nations investigation concluded that 93% of the casualties came at the hand of the military and that the systematic slaughter of indigenous people constituted as genocide. In 1971, a group of 2,000 students from the University of San Carlos led a protest against the violence and in 1980, a group of Mayan Quiche occupied the Spanish embassy to bring awareness to the increase of violence and oppression against the indigenous communities. As a consequence, the Guatemalan army burned down the embassy, killing 37 people. That same year, the Guatemalan army launched Operation Sofia, which focused on revolutionary resistance. 
However, whoever said or did something to defend his or her right against the government, it was called a revolutionary or communist supporter. That was the excuse the government used to attack communities and by destroying entire villages. In 1982, General Jose Efraín Rios Montt became president of Guatemala. Under his command, hundreds of my people were killed, raped, tortured, and burned alive. During the three years period, 1981 to 1983, the army destroyed more than 625 villages, killed more than 200,000 people, and displaced an additional 1.5 million, while more than 150,000 were driven to seek refuge in other countries like Mexico, Canada, or the United States. In 1984, the Guatemala Supreme Court report that around 100,000 children had lost at least one parent in the massacres. An example is what happened in Dos Eras Massacre and Finding Oscar. Finally, in 1996, the 36-year-long war ended with the signing of the peace accord between the government and representatives of the resistance. The accord hoped for cultural, political, and socioeconomic change in Guatemala. For the Mayas, the articles in the Accord protecting indigenous rights, culture, and languages preservation have made little differences. After a long time, the United Nations took notice of the plight of Mayan and other indigenous peoples around the world and wrote on September 13, 2007, its first declaration on rights of indigenous people around the world. This declaration has the distinction of being the only declaration in the United Nations which was drafted with the rights holder themselves, the indigenous peoples. We see this as a strong declaration which embodies the most important rights we and our ancestors have long fought for. This is a declaration which makes the opening phrase of the United Nations Charter, we the peoples, meaningful for the more than 370 million indigenous persons all over the world. Keep in mind, a declaration is only good once it is executed with fidelity. As a result of a racist ideology established since colonial times, many people in Guatemala believe that teaching Maya, Xinka, and Garifano languages alongside Spanish is a setback for education. The government law 19-2003 of national languages was established. The law recognizes the respect, promotion, development, and usage of the indigenous languages of the Maya, Garifano, and Xinka peoples in Guatemala and the national education law that establishes that education must respond to the multilingual, multi-ethnic, and multicultural environment of the communities. In addition, the Guatemalan Peace Agreement and the Convention on the Rights of the Child endorse an intercultural bilingual education system. The basis to implement a more suitable educational system to the community is there, but in practice, bilingual education has not begun because there is no political will to carry it out. Education in Guatemala is free and mandatory through sixth grade. However, this is not the case in the rural areas. The lack of classroom space, teaching materials, classroom furniture, water, electricity, technology, low pay, and the one to two hours commute each way makes it hard to recruit and retain quality teachers. Data reveals a deep and ongoing inequality between the educational achievement and opportunities available for urban children of Ladino descendants as compared to children of Mayan descendants living in the rural areas. Approximately 25.5% of the population in Guatemala are illiterate, and more than 60% in the indigenous population. 78% of children who complete sixth grade do not continue to middle school because families cannot afford the tuition of education and young people are expected to support the family after sixth grade. This situation is even more extreme among the indigenous population with 53.5% of Maya people aged 15 and 19 not completing primary school. Only 54% of indigenous girls are in school compared with 71% of indigenous boys. By the age of 16, only 25% of indigenous girls are enrolled compared with 45% of boys. When Maya children are given the opportunity to study the legacy of their ancestors and contribution to civilization, 
they would take pride and ownership of their history no matter where they live. It is important to keep in mind during this time of distant learning, newcomers may not even know how to turn on a computer, much less to keep up with the required assignments. Maya languages in Guatemala. There are 25 languages in Guatemala, 22 Mayan, Xinca, Garifuna, and Spanish. Garifuna and Xinca are spoken by African descendants brought by Spaniards to be enslaved in Guatemala. Spanish was imposed and became the official language of Guatemala. The Maya languages were banned and ignored. People who speak their language rather than Spanish are still subject to exclusion and discrimination today. Mayan languages in Palm Beach County. The following Mayan languages have been identified in the school district of Palm Beach County. Aguacateco, Acateco, Chug, Mam, Popti, Canjobal, Quiche, and Chachiteco. Looking at the number from last school year, it gives you an idea how many Maya students are in the school district of Palm Beach County. How might this impact English language acquisition of the Mayan students in your class and your perception of the student? Looking at the alphabet of Mam, Canjobal, and Acateco, you will see that they are similar. Each letter represents a single sound. That is to say, they represent a single value. Canjobal is closely related to Acateco and Popti, and no generic relationship to Spanish. The main focus here is to notice the letters D, F, G, V, and Z in general are not part of the Mayan alphabets. Therefore, the students who speak one of the Mayan languages at home may face a challenge with the sound that each letter makes in the English alphabet. As a consequence, Students in early grades face the possibility of being placed in the ESC programs because they have not been able to produce the sound of some or all of, of these letters. It is important to know your students and their language background because it will benefit the student's academic success. Hello everyone, my name is Pascual Francisco Felipe and I am a descendant of the Mayan Canjoas Dash Acateco community of the Northern Highland of Guatemala. I currently work with the school district of Palm Beach County as an Amayan Canjobas Dash Acateco language interpreter with the Department of Multicultural Education. I am a motivational speaker to students in Palm Beach County. I share my story and a difficult journey from Guatemala to Mexico to the United States. My inspirational journey it's a testament to what a person can achieve when given the opportunities and tools for success. I have conducted professional development for teachers, students, administrators, and staffs regarding the Maya needs in Palm Beach County. The effect of the long civil war, tigery, and exodus of Maya families to different parts of Central and North America. Many families came to the United States seeking refuge and a better life. The transaction for many newcomers is not easy. Learning a new language, adapting, learning new norms, and an education system takes time. For many Maya students and their families, it's even more challenging Everyone assumes all Maya children and families speak Spanish. As we have learned, this is not the case. To the best way to meet the need of Maya students, find out first if interpreting is needed in the home language. Use the Form 1944 to request an interpreter if your school does not have a Maya language community facilitator. This same form is also used to request for another for other indigenous language through the language line. The Maya team is here to assist you by bridging communication with your students and families. Today, the new generation of Mayas continue to contribute to the development of our civilization. 
we are the descendant of the mighty civilization and we have something to contribute if opportunity is given to us. Here's a Maya rose that your student can identify with and connect with. Rigoberta Menchu is a Maya Quiche who was awarded a Nobel Prize for Peace in 1992. She is widely known as a human rights activist, writer, and advocate of indigenous rights, not only in Guatemala, but in the Western Hemisphere. Marcos Andres Antil is a founder and chief operating officer of Sumac, a leading indigenous marketing company. Since Sumac's inception in late 2003, he has provided services to companies across more than 25 countries. Until Yamaya Kanjoal was 14 years old when he migrated to the United States, he and his family, like so many immigrants then and now, cross entire countries to escape violence and hopelessness. He studied at Belmont High School in California and he earned a bachelor's degree in computer science from California State University. Marta Florinda Gonzalez, a Maya Canjobal community leader living in Nebraska, is the co-author of the book, The Maya Among Us, a book that focuses on stories and histories of contemporary Maya women living in Nebraska and working in meat packing plants. Osvaldo Martin left his town of Todos Santos Cuchumatanes, Guatemala at the age of four and was raised by his parents in East Oakland while he worked as an interpreter from the court in Oakland, California. Martin attended college and he is pursuing his dream of becoming an environmental engineer. He also taken on the ambitious project of creating a mom legal glossary and, court in, and a court interpreter handbook to empower other bilingual mom people to become interpreters. Jose Luis Aguirre, attorney at law, born in Guatemala, a, a Maya original speak Acateco and Spanish. He received his Juris Doctor degree in December 2001 from the Florida State University College of Law in Tallahassee, Florida, and his Bachelor of Art degree in May of 1993 from Brandeis University in Massachusetts. His life experience as an immigrant gave him a unique perspective of his client's immigration needs and gave him a passion to advocate for his clients. Jaira Tubak, a nine years old gifted pianist, she has traveled to Central America and South America showcasing her talent. Juanita Cabrera Lopez, Maya Mom Nation, Executive Director of the International Maya League in Washington, D.C. Benito Gaspar, Maya Cateco Community Relationship Coordinator, Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Victor Montejo, a Maya Jacalteco, anthropologist, author, and professor of the Department of Native American Studies at the University of Florida. Mayra Domingo Cárdenas, a Maya Public Community Language Facilitator in the school district of Palm Beach County, graduated in 2017 from Lakewood High School. Leslie Sales, Maya Mom Community Language Facilitator in the school district of Palm Beach County, graduated in 2019 from Lakewood High School. Gregorio Tomas Andres, Secondary Technology Supporter in the school district of Palm Beach County. Before we conclude this presentation, I would like for you to look at the resources available to you. Nowadays, the internet is full of information and videos. The following are some links to videos and articles for further information. 
We cannot guarantee these articles or videos would still be up on the website as information is updated on a daily basis. But here's a few links on the following pages. Thank you for choosing our session. As we come to a conclusion to this brief presentation, I would like to remind you the history of my ancestors, the Mayas, cannot be covered in a short time. Their contributions to civilization are countless. The genocide committed against my ancestors during colonial times and during the Civil War is slowly being brought to light. We strongly believe that knowing the past helps us to understand the present and help the future generation of Mayan students in your classroom. I end with this quote from Rigoberta Menchu, the first Mayan woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize in 1992. We are not myths of the past, ruins in the jungle or zoos. We are people and we want to be respected, not to be victims of intolerance and racism. Chonte, gracias, thank you, Maltios Chawe.